Welcome to this week's episode of So What's the Catch? Before we get into it, make sure if you haven't done so already, punch that subscribe button like a UFC fire and subscribe to the So What's the Catch YouTube channel today. But let's get down to the nuts and bolts of this thing. Because we've had some bombshells over the past couple of days. The latest bombshell being just a couple minutes before we actually went live here on the So What's the Catch Facebook page. Baker Mayfield has been traded to the Carolina Panthers. And what's the correlation in all of this? Guess who we play week one down in Charlotte at Bank of America Stadium? The Carolina Panthers. Hey, I give you all the credit in the world. You predicted this one. I did? Or was that you, James? <laughs> Someone predicted it. I have no idea. It doesn't matter. But Someone it, predicted that, that Baker was going to go to the Panthers. I have okay. no idea. But here, here's the deal. A lot of people are jumping the gun here and are just assuming he's going to be their starter over Sam Darnold. Like, yeah. uh, as Peter Schrager just pointed out on Twitter, uh, that locker room still thinks of uh, Sam Darnold very highly. Mm-hmm. So, which means that Baker's going to have to beat him out for the starting job. And let's be real here. Like, they essentially are trading one kind of bad for a different kind of bad in Baker and Darnold. They're yeah. both bad, but for different reasons. Yeah, 100%. I agree, and I don't think Baker's going to like being in a quarterback competition. He, he thinks he's so good that he deserves to, to be handed the keys to the castle. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that that's going to happen in Carolina. I think James is 100% correct. So, it's going to be interesting to see how this thing shakes out. But, um, yeah, I mean, we didn't didn't have to give up much. No, yeah, he's got a salary. He's he's taking a three and a half million dollar salary cut. The Panthers are paying five million. They get a conditional fifth rounder that might be turned into a fourth rounder based on playing time. Mm-hmm. Like they traded him for basically like a bag of footballs. Okay. Yeah, basically. It's like when the Cavs made that trade to get Andre Drummond. We basically got Andre Drummond for a ham sandwich. That's basically what the Panthers did here. They got Baker I say, Mayfield. I would say Brandon Knight's more valuable than Baker Mayfield, but, you know. <laughs> There's a real good argument for that, James. <laughs> but let me ask you guys this. If you're the Panthers, I know because everyone's everyone's already jumped the gun and started, you know, doing this ridiculousness of doing the, the Baker to Higgins connection, okay? Yes. Let me ask you this. Mm. Oh, good God. If you're the Panthers, if you're Matt Rule, which connection would you rather be interested in? Baker Mayfield to Rashard Higgins or Sam Darnold to Robbie Anderson? Because I'd be interested in Sam, Sam Darnold, Darnold to Robbie Anderson. Anderson. I will agree with you on that. Yeah, Sam okay. Darnold to Robbie Anderson, 100%. Yeah, and we know Robbie Anderson was not too thrilled about the rumors of Baker Mayfield coming to town earlier in the year. So he kind of made it clear that, like, that's not his guy. Um, yeah. So I firmly expect Robbie Anderson to be in the Sam Darnold camp right now. And James is 100% correct. Like, those two are a way, you know, more talented combo uh, than Baker and Hollywood Higgins. Can't believe Come on, that. man. What about the what about the touchdown celebration? He sucks, Chirk. Okay. Higgins, you like the Hollywood sucks. celebration? We're not, even going, we're not even going to address this. Let's stay on the Baker Mayfield trade. Because he is out of the – Quarterback room for the Browns, which means we are all in on. I get well, I can't say we're all in on Deshaun Watson because we don't know one if he's going to be suspended, two, how long he will be suspended if indeed that suspension comes to fruition. I think they should have definitely for him. The the Browns are are already in are all in on their quarterback room. If you look at their quarterback room, they're all very similar players. Okay, the the one guy that was the odd man out was Baker Mayfield. He was never a part of the equation. No matter how many times people tried to say the Browns can play Baker Mayfield if Deshaun Watson, it was never going to happen. Yeah, as soon as they brought in Josh Dobbs and and had an even another option behind um, Watson and Brissett, like that really sent the message like. No, we'd rather have a a less talented guy in Josh Dobbs that fits our system Mm -hmm. than go with Baker Mayfield because that's he doesn't fit what the Browns' plans are for the future. Um, He he doesn't. The writing was on the wall. I still think it's pretty pathetic that Baker Mayfield was the number one pick just a couple years ago, and the Browns trade him, and all they get is a fifth round pick. It's because they, they, they botched the pick, okay? Yeah. They, they, they botched the pick, and this is what happens when you make a mistake. 
Yeah. This is this is by subtraction, too. The Browns won this trade. They did, because, you know, we don't got to hear any more Baker Mayfield crap every single day. Yep. The yeah, Browns won this trade. He's he's not a guaranteed starter in Carolina. Um, you, you bring in a guy who's questionable in terms of locker room and leadership and all that. Uh, the drama and, and circus that surrounds him. Um, I think that we won this trade. I think that at the end of the day, we wanted desperately to get rid of him. The fact that we could get anything in return for him to me is a, is a victory. So, yeah. right. I victory. Yeah. I totally agree with you, Brian. I just think it's hilarious that he was the number one pick and all you get is a fifth round pick for him now. That's all. So let's look at the the situation with Carolina for, for, for Baker. Let's pretend Baker wins the starting job for a second. Okay. Okay, because I think the word pretend is the, the key word here. Yeah, um, we have to be there. Here's, here's something, you know, there's a couple things you got to consider here. One, uh, massive step back coaching wise. Matt Rule is a bum. He is not a good coach. Okay. I agree this is you. a move of complete desperation by the Panthers. Matt Rule knows he his job is on the hot seat. He knows that he has no job security beyond this season. If he doesn't do something, and show some sort of ability to be productive in any way, he's done. Yep. That's what this is. So you look at the coaching wise, Kevin Zapansky is a significantly better coach than Matt Rule is. Okay. I don't think that's debatable. Okay. No, I agree. Yeah. Look, look at the skill positions. The skill positions for the Panthers. Uh are are they better than Cleveland? No, they're not. Right. Outside of Christian McCaffrey when he's healthy, but when, you know, he's never healthy. So outside you, of him. Let me ask you this. Would you rather have Christian McCaffrey or Nick Chubb? Nick Chubb all day, every day, Nick right? Nick Chubb. Now. Yeah. Okay. I would take so, either, personally. But I, I would say that McCaffrey is a – outside of Nick Chubb, like he's – He's injury prone. He's probably the best athlete out of the group. Yeah. And you, you look at the, the skill position players, the, the let's just compare it to last year's Browns team, last time that Baker even played. Sure. Okay, are, are you going to tell me that the combination of DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, and Terrence Marshall Jr. is, is better than Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, and whoever they had at the third spot? Yeah. Are you going to tell me that Ian Thomas, uh, who, by the way, who the fuck is Ian Thomas? Um, Sounds like a goat. Is, is better than Austin Hooper or even David Njoku or Harrison Bryant? Right. Yeah. And not saying something because – Old like, Tommy Tremble. Don't forget about old Tommy Tremble. <laughs> who, who is that? Who is that? Tommy exactly. Tremble is tight end right now. He's got played. Thomas being questionable. Remember him, James? Yeah. But here's – let me just touch on something. The fact that you said David Njoku is better than Ian Thomas, considering, like, how we all feel about David Njoku, or three out of the four of us, that's saying something. Well, yeah, I mean, you look at his numbers last year. He didn't have a single touchdown, and he only had 18 catches. So, I mean, he's not not good. You know, he's not productive. Right, I know, but we all that, – that's, that's why I expect Tommy Tremble probably to be that starting starting tight end. Uh, he had more catches last year and, and seems to have more upside to me. He at least scored a touchdown for them. Yeah. <laughs> he had one. one. He had one. The one thing I will say – I feel like the Browns have a better running back duo than Carolina by far, with or trio, I guess, because you could throw Dearness Johnson in there. Now, how would but uh... here's my here's my only question: Is McCaffrey a better pass catching running back than that trio? Yes. Uh, sure, he's, he's a better pass catching guy. He, he got the first yeah. thousand and thousand yards in receiving since Marshall Falk. Yeah, I mean, sure, pass catching, but you're not looking, at least the Browns' offense isn't looking for massive pass catching production out of their running backs. Right. You know, that's not the way their offense is necessarily built. So, yeah, sure, Christian McCaffrey, he can do a lot of things. He can split out wide. He can catch passes out of the backfield. But, like, we've seen Baker with wide, or, you know, running backs out wide. He, he's terrible. He's a disaster. Yep. Like, are, are we just going to forget that Baker Mayfield's still too short, that he still can't read post-snap, that he still can't see all, over his offensive linemen? None of this has changed just because he's changing where he's playing. All and of this his, still applies. And his ego it, on top of it. Yeah. It, it, 
he thinks he's one of the best and he's I, I hate to break it to him. I mean he he's he, I mean, he's good, but he's not. He's not. He's not good. good. No, just, you, you can stop with that. He's not good. Carson Wentz got more returns play. than Baker Mayfield did. Okay. Yep. Carson Wentz fucking sucks. And had broken. Carson Wentz was terrible. Wentz is bad. Wentz is bad, and he's got as much of an injury history, if not more, than Baker. And they got he's way got more, more for him. Injury yeah. history. Yeah, I don't think Carson Wentz is a bad quarterback. He's bad. He's not good. No, it, he's bad, sure. Kirk, but do, who do you think is bad though? Like I've never really heard you say. Uh, something yeah, come on. Bad. Give me, give me a list of quarterbacks you, or players, just players you think is bad because I. Yeah, I want to hear this list. Yeah, name okay. a bad player in the NFL. A bad. Pl- I mean, you made it to the NFL, but yeah, a bad player. Okay, in- you're, you that, just because you made it doesn't mean you're good. That, like, like sure, you're better than 99% of football players in the world currently, right. but you can still suck in the NFL. Yeah. Right. It's the it's the it's the big show, you know. Doug it's, Peterson. Okay, how about an active one? Yeah. Not okay. a coach. <laughs> an active player that is bad. Yes. You see our point now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see our yeah. point. Like you think everybody's good. Carson Wentz isn't good. Don't don't hurt. get tricked by his touchdown to interception ratio. Everybody did with that a baker a year before. Right. Okay. Numbers can lie, film cannot. Right. Film says right. they're terrible. And Brian and Baker's I'm always talking- throwing between the hash marks, too. He's always throwing between the hashes into tight ends and whatnot. So he's taking those low risk, you know, throws more often than you know. I think David Mills is bad. Okay, there you go. There you go. Bad. There we go. Yes, come on. Clap, okay. clap, clap. He's he he actually, yeah. I don't. He has no business being a starter at all. There we go. There we go. About time. And, Boom. And Brian, on your point, just ben to Roethlisberger increase. currently. Well, he's retired, so, <laughs> so <laughs> Brian, he's not playing anymore. <laughs> to quickly circle back to Carson Wentz, you like you said, he's injury prone, and he's going to probably the worst field in the NFL to play on. He's probably going to get injured in week one playing on that field. Yeah, and I, I think if something happens and Baker has to be the starter, um, I think he's going to get McCaffrey lit up um, because he's not good at those little passes to, like, the the out routes and the, the wheel routes and stuff that they like to run with him. Like, he's not good at those routes. Like He, he can't throw those balls with touch. Like, he's going to get him lit up because he's not going to be putting the ball in good placement and – We've seen with Christian McCaffrey what happens when, you know, you make him vulnerable, he gets hurt. Yeah. We've yeah. seen Baker put his play, his receivers in positions to get hurt before. Okay. Yeah. So this isn't something new. Okay. Right. He right. he has the tendency to, to miss receivers. He has a tendency to throw high. Do you remember during his second year, I think it was uh, very early in the season, he threw really high to Njoku. It resulted in him breaking his, his hand or his wrist or whatever the hell it was. That's right. Like, yeah. That, that was a bad injury on Njoku. And that was yeah. all. Baker, he he left him. He laid him out to dry, basically, with that pass. It, it happens all the time. Yep. And a uh, real quick side note, by the way, the complete mismanagement of the Panthers over the past couple of years is absolutely hilarious. This is a, yeah, a, a it's traffic, awesome. traffic uh, that they've sent away for the, a quarterback room consisting of Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, and Matt Corral. Uh, a second, third, fourth, fourth, fifth, and sixth, mm. and they've ended up with this quarterback room. Yeah. 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 Good lord, that's yeah. 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 No a dumpster oh, fire. Garbage. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely. That, that sounds. That garbage. sounds. It, hey, it, that sounds just as bad as the the zero sixteen season. The zero sixteen season, the Browns at least had draft picks. Yeah. yeah. The, you know the Panthers. I mean, what is this? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this is yeah. It's really bad, and they finished bad last year too. They were fourth in the NFC South. Like but, they are not in a good spot. And bringing in Baker Mayfield of all people is—it's uh, not the answer. Uh, and we, you know, James, you already touched on Rule not being the best head coach. Like uh, this is just not a good football team. Like it, it's—it's it's a good team to open up our season against. To be fair, I'm surprised Christian McCaffrey hasn't requested a trade out of Carolina yet. To be yeah, but I actually do. He have to leverage with his injuries and whatnot. You know it's, what I mean? It's, it's maybe he's just a loyal dude. Nobody wants to take on that contract. Exactly. He's a running back who's gotten hurt and he's owed a lot of money. Yeah. Nobody yeah. wants that. Smartest thing for him to do is just stay and take the max money he can get from them and 
till his career is over because yeah. running backs have short careers and a guy that's hurt as often as him, he's not going to make it until he's 34, 35, like a Frank Gore. Yep. Any sort of trade that would involve McCaffrey would involve him taking a significantly a significant salary reduction yep. in a, a restructure. And why the hell would you do that when you can just do what you're doing and get paid a fuck ton of money? Right. I agree. Yeah, but Outside of him like wanting to ring chase, like if he has a really burning desire to win a championship before he retires, like – that's the only real situation I could see him leaving him just being like, okay, you know, one final run, let's make a shot at this thing. But like outside of that, I think he's going to stay put and just take as much money as he can get there. Yeah. Play off the contract. And if you really want to ring, ring chase at the end of career for one year deals for a couple million bucks. Okay. Yep. Yep. That's all he's got to do. Yep. I mean, Call it your great. retirement season, get all the, the flowers at every stadium for the rest of the, I think the he's got potential season. to be a Hall of Famer. Okay. No, he he's, does not have potential to be a Hall of Famer. Not anymore. Nope. You sure? Not anymore. He got hurt too much. Yeah, way too much. Too much time. I, yeah. I still yeah. I still got faith in him getting back up in injuries. He missed way too much time. Yeah, he's not getting any younger either. No. Just turned I'm, 26. Yeah. yeah, I'm telling you guys, looking yeah. at the first four weeks of the season – the Browns can start the season 4-0, even if Deshaun Watson is not able to play due to the suspension or whatever, um, and Jacoby Brissett is the starting quarterback. You got Panthers, Jets, Steelers, Falcons. Four very winnable games. I agree with you there. The Steelers at home is the the one there that I'm, I'm not really quite sure what to think of the Steelers yet because they could go either way. Yeah. Um, right. Quarterback situation just being it's a big question mark. You know, we're not gonna know until they play. Um, but I still think that the Steelers have a really good team and you know they've obviously had our number for a majority of the past, you know, couple decades. So yeah. I, I think that that's still a very losable game for the Browns um without Deshaun Watson starting. That's a fair assessment. And at the Atlanta game could actually be tricky because let's say we beat the Steelers in week three, the Browns could be very high emotionally. And then you had to play like a lesser opponent in Atlanta. So maybe the Browns play down to the Falcons or however, however you say, it, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Uh, I'm not even going to worry about, you know, schedule speculation until we're like week three in the preseason, because by then you'll know how the team is put together we should have an idea of who the quarterback's going to be. And then any injuries that any of the teams have, we're going to have a better idea of. And, yeah. and so you have a much clearer picture of how things are going to go. They got some weapons though on the offensive side of the ball, some young, young talent, you know, they've had some really high draft picks over the past couple of years and they, they've got some people that can threaten. It's just going to come down to that quarterback position and how well they can play. Um, but you know, they got Drake London in there now. They have Kyle Pitts in there. Um, you know, I think both those guys are going to be really good for a long, uh, really long time. Yeah. Except Calvin Ridley suspended for the year. So who's, <coughs> who's Marcus Mario uh, going to throw to as his primary target? Who cares? He sucked too. Yeah. yeah. Mario, poor guy. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I wonder who his money's on for starters. I, I- I don't know. Were you guys ever high on Mariota? I was never high on him. I I thought he was like for the first Even couple of Oregon, seasons, I wasn't high on him. For the first couple seasons, I thought he was he he was going to be good. Like especially when I saw that remember that highlight when he like ran a hundred yards. Or I mean, him? cool, but like do something with your arm. Yeah, it's a yeah. quarterback. Want to I mean, see something with the arm? See a little arm talent there. His first couple seasons, I had potential, but after that, not really. I was never big on him coming out it's, of college. I'm like, this guy's not going to be good. I'm never big on Oregon quarterbacks in general, just because of the the system and the nature of the way that they play. It's very mm-hmm. hard to get a read on guys coming out of Oregon. Um, but no, I was never that high on him when he was there. I, I've never been that high on him. Period. So uh, I think he's a good backup. Like I think he's a good quality backup in this league. Um, but other than that, you know, I, I don't see him as like a starting caliber, one of the best thirty-two in the league. Yeah. Ritter's going to be Ritter's going to be on his heels uh, like all training camp. I bet there's a competition there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree. So, 
But yeah, we might be looking at playing against a, a rookie quarterback in two games in a row there with uh, Pittsburgh and Atlanta. Yep. And we could be looking at playing of our former quarterback in week one and a second year quarterback in week two. Oh, I, I love so, so I would, much to play against Bakers. That dude's going to do nothing but throw picks. Yeah, and I hope he plays so bad. I would love to see Miles Garrett get like eight sacks. And Denzel Ward to get like Denzel three. Ward to pick six, like two or three. Yes. Picks. Are you going to tell me all those guys in that defense that had to watch Baker Mayfield completely sputter out over and over again last year wouldn't love <laughs> to take their frustration out and be like, motherfucker, we stopped this offense. We give you a chance to do something, and you threw a goddamn pick. Like, yeah. It's 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 time to embrace our Tim Disney and make you pay. Yeah, <laughs> make him pay. I one hundred percent agree with you, James. Yeah, I hope to God that he starts Week One. It's a great storyline, um, and I, and I, all this talk about like, well, what happens if Baker goes somewhere and he does really well and then <laughs> unsuspended for a whole it's, year? Like, no, it's not going to happen. You live in a fantasy world. Mm-hmm. Baker Mayfield is a trash quarterback, and he should. Honestly, be a backup somewhere. I, I don't think he's ever going to be a starter anywhere. Um, uh, and anyway, on one hand, unless... I, would love, I would love to see the Browns kick his head in in week one. Okay. Yeah. Just because it's just like you're a bum and I want your former team to show you that you're a bum. Yeah. On the other, I want to see him lose the quarterback job just so I can sit back and laugh and laugh and laugh and watch him ride the bench. Yeah. Yeah. So either way, week one's going to be a win win for us. Basically. I think so. But like, let, let's put it this way. Even if, let's say, the, the Panthers win in week one. Let's put that out there. This isn't going to be some magnificent, triumphant revenge tour for the Panthers or Baker. It doesn't mean shit. Right. Like, yeah. cool, you won a game. Like, Yeah. Either yeah, way, I agree with you. One one thing, it, it is a little bit of a trap game. If we go into that game and Baker's the starter, and for whatever reason – I, who knows? Jacoby doesn't feel right, and and Josh Dobbs ends up starting Week One or something like that. Like it'll get mm-hmm. so overblown. Uh, I, I really hope that that doesn't happen, but I, I don't know. It, it seems like a long shot for something like that to happen to me. I really anticipate that it's not going to be Baker starting this game. I don't think that they want to put him in that kind of position in his very first start for the team, anyway. You know what I mean? Like they they want him to be successful there. Matt Rule's job depends on that quarterback situation working out regardless of who he goes with. Yeah. So do you want to bring in a guy and put him, you know, uh, against the team that he has this much vitriol and history against? Like, you know, I, I don't see them, like, even if they think he is the guy, I could still see them waiting until week two or three to, to put him in at starter. Yeah. If that it's, makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, it's, that it's, totally it's, makes sense, Brian. Um, it Again, the two situations are not anywhere near – similar but it's kind of like with russell wilson going back to seattle right away in week one it's i get it there's not that same level of venom and animosity and all that but it's like you're playing your former team right away like there's gonna be extra motivation there yeah and it's week one you know everybody's excited football's back like all of these games get incredible viewership ratings like it'll be the lead story on ESPN Baker Mayfield still somehow with all the great players in the NFL. If Baker Mayfield is listed as starter week one for Carolina, he'll be the lead topic on first take. I'm sure. But yeah, I don't know. I I'm, I'm, I'm just happy that he's gone and we don't have to deal with the speculation that, Oh, maybe he, uh, ends up <laughs> and while Watson's injured, uh, it's the best thing for Baker. It's the best thing for the Browns. It's like, how many times did you hear that? A, a million, just- multiple times a day. Multiple times a day. You could. I had to mute certain topics on Twitter to avoid. Yeah, it. my my, my and, was talking about that one too. And, and for what it's worth, I don't care that Baker Mayfield actually landed somewhere else. The dude's still fucking Millhouse. He's Millhouse. Nobody wants him. Nobody wants him. Nobody wants him. But the He's Panthers wanted him. Barely. I mean, they didn't have to give up the the house. You give up nothing for him. Right. Like it, it, this was just like uh, they needed a guy, and there's a guy that's really. You know, cheap for us. Yeah, uh, they, yeah they really sure. didn't give up much of sub- anything of substance. So, and also think about this, Chuck. If the Panthers really and truly like des- excuse me, desperately wanted him, they would have trade made this trade with us earlier in the season. They wouldn't have done it this close to training camp. They exhausted all other options until they made this decision. 
Mm -hmm. so I 100% agree, Josh. You you hit that right on the money. Like mm -hmm. if they wanted them as bad and, and, and they had this plan for him to come in and be the guy and be the starter, like it wouldn't have took this long. They would have had him there for OTAs. Right, right. He wasn't there. Exactly. Yeah. He was that, doing God knows what in Texas. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I, I'm glad that it's something that we can put behind us. But, um, yeah, I, I don't see this working out great for the Panthers. But it, it also could just be like a non, non-impactful non thing for the Panthers, you know, if they end up moving forward um, without him at starting quarterback and it works out, you know, then it's, it is what it is. You know, they gave up a conditional pick for him. You know what I mean? Like it, it could be a non-story for Carolina if, if he's not the guy that ends up being a starter. I mean, honestly, I, I think we can all see a world where the Panthers suck this year. Matt Rule gets fired, and both Darnold and Baker are gone in, in yeah. Carolina after the season. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's, a, that's a very, very real possibility. And then you know, with whatever their record is, three and fourteen or four and thirteen, they end up taking a quarterback in the top, you know, four or five picks. Right. And think of the massive amount of pressure that's going to be on Baker Mayfield's shoulders when he's finally back on the field. You know what I mean? Like he, he's got everything to play for. Um, and, and same for Carolina. Like it, it's just going to be such a pressure filled season. And he's been a guy that's shown like when, when times get tough, like he, he's not a good leader. You know what I mean? He, he causes more drama than, than he does to help the situation. And mm -hmm. if things start to get rough in Carolina, like I expect him to be right in the middle of every controversy with everybody on the team. So I could see this being a really, really bad thing for the Panthers. But yeah, I mean, he, he, he routinely threw the best coach he's ever had under the bus. Right. Okay. And Kevin Stefanski. Yeah. Uh, that happened a yep. lot. Mm -hmm. a guy I know that's... he. Sorry. No, I was just going to say a guy that, that, yeah, has dealt with so many changes at the coaching position and finally has a guy that, like, clearly is head and shoulders above the rest and he throws him under the bus. So. Right. I know that, like, Baker Mayfield and the fan and Browns fans here in Cleveland, like, didn't have a bad relationship or anything, but it was, it's kind of feels similar to when Boston fans were like, hey, Kyrie, we'll pack your bags and send you on a plane out of here. It it feels kind of similar to that. Well, Kyrie was at least good. <laughs> yeah, Kyrie was good. had some of value <laughs> to give away. But I'll agree. Like there, a lot of the fan base has wanted this to happen. Like a lot of people wanted him to be moved away. So yeah, exactly. it has that same feeling. Like uh, a lot of us were just exhausted with the situation and done, and just wanted to move move on from Baker Mayfield. But there's still a very large contingency of people on Twitter that are crying right now about the Browns making the biggest mistake in their their history and it's the Deshaun situations. He's never going to play for the Browns and Baker's going to go win pro be a pro bowler in Carolina. Like it's all on Twitter right now. You can go read all of that nonsense. So and, and that's hilarious because apparently the people uh, saying stuff about him becoming a pro bowler in Carolina are completely unaware of how stacked the NFC is in quarterbacks. Right. Uh, he has zero chance of making yeah. the pro bowl in the, in the NFC. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. I, I, like, I saw one guy that was like, how are you going to feel when Deshaun's suspended for the entire season and Baker wins 10 games and takes him to the postseason? And it's like, are you high? Like, <laughs> where has he shown that he's capable? You know what I mean? Like, he's not going to take that. It's not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, he, he's on the worst team in his division. Right. He's the worst quarterback in his division. Like, yeah, I think that Browns team that he played for might be the best roster that he'll ever find himself with. You know? What would you tell Baker if he came into this this chat right now? Dude, you suck. Good riddance. Adios, loser. <laughs> <laughs> That's what yeah. you would say as soon as he came on here? Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm so sick of dealing with him. Like, I I realized this guy was terrible, like, three years ago, and everyone's just like, no, man, you're just a hater. I'm like, no, he sucks. You are just blinded. You were ahead okay? of the curve. You were ahead of the curve. You you listened to the advanced analytics about Baker that, that showed from the very beginning that a lot of his his numbers were fraudulent. A, a, lot, of his, a lot of his performances were, too. Like, yeah. I, I was out on him when he was still in Oklahoma. 
Like, mm-hmm. does anyone remember like him in the college football playoff and him looking like hot garbage in yeah. uh in the fourth quarter? Like, yeah. we saw exactly what we saw exactly what we saw last year in Cleveland at Oklahoma, where he had no pocket presence, he had no feel, he tried to make moves in the pocket, and he would take big sacks or fumble or make poor throwing decisions. None of this is new. People no. just were like, "No, that's that that's the anomaly." No, that's. This is the rule. Him yeah. being good is the anomaly. Okay. I agree 100%. Yeah, I agree 100%. Like, when we made it to the playoffs in, what was it, 2020, 2021, something like that, whatever it was, one of those two, Um, and we would go on to beat Pittsburgh, it wasn't because of Baker Mayfield. That was right. because of the Steelers playing like shit shooting themselves in the foot, giving us good field position, and we were able to make plays. Yeah. And and then in the game against Kansas City in the next round, if Patrick Mahomes doesn't get injured, we don't make that a game. We lose that game by 30. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that playoff run, you know, is what really caused this whole mess because the Browns were like, oh, shit, he led us to the playoffs. Well, in their mind, he they thought he led them or led us to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're like, "Oh, well, now we have to pick up his fifth year option." And clearly, yeah. it came back to bite us in the ass. Yeah, that's the only the only thing that Baker Bros can really go back to is just that. Well, he, he's the best quarterback we've had since '99, or he's he's the most successful we've had since '99, and blah blah I mean- blah. It's like it is not wrong. That's the only number, though. You look at all of the stats, all of the analytics. You you look at it, and he's not. He's just objectively a bad quarterback. Did he deserve to be first overall either that year? No, no, no. You, no. Josh you know Allen did. Allen yeah. Josh Allen did. He was yeah. should have been the number one pick. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, something else I was out ahead on. Josh Allen, number one. Baker Mayfield, not good. Like. Lamar Jackson was also there. Yeah, Lamar when Jackson was there. To me, him. When are people just going to start listening to me? I, I've been right about all this shit. Time has been my best friend. We okay? could have had him two chances. We had two chances to get Lamar Jackson. Because we had the fourth pick, remember? We, yeah. we did. And, like, honestly, my ideal draft that year would have been Josh Allen one, make a Fitzpatrick fourth. Okay? Ooh, that would have been my that. ideal draft. Ooh. I love that. Yeah, I love oh, that. That would have been amazing. But what about our staff? Would they be able to to go along with our staff? What, what about them? What staff? I don't know. All that combination matters. Your con- your question was: Would our staff be able to go along with our staff? What does that would, mean? Would our staff be able to go along with Minka and Josh Allen? Sure. My bad. They're, 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 they're good players. That's the yeah. thing. Good right. players are able to transcend bad situations, okay? If yeah, a player absolutely. is good, he will still produce, no matter how terrible the coach is, okay? Right. If, a, if a player's performance is reliant on coach and scheme and situation, that tells you everything about the player. It's yeah. that he is a product of that. He is not necessarily good. Okay? And that's a lot of the guys that are the guys you can win with, not because, right. but with, you know? And that's what Baker is. He's a guy you can win with in a system like that. Mm-hmm. But he's not a guy who can transcend a bad coaching situation or a bad talent on the roster or whatever it may be. He doesn't take you up and above that that next hump to get wins. Like he's not a transcendent player like that. And at right. the quarterback position, like that that you need that to be a Super Bowl team. You need a guy who can go out there and win the game when it's on the line. Mm-hmm. Like look how bad the Colts were during Peyton Manning's rookie year. Okay, look how bad the Lions were early on in Matthew Stafford's career. Yeah, okay. sure. Uh, the Bengals with Carson Palmer. Okay, I'm sort of the big, biggest Carson Palmer guy, but I can admit he's a, he was a good quarterback. Right. Like you look at those guys, they came into dog shit situations, and they were able to pull through and be good quarterbacks. And when I mentioned here and just a second ago that didn't win a Super Bowl was Carson Palmer. Right. But the other two have won Super Bowls. Okay. Yeah. Those are the quarterbacks that you look at and go, this guy came into a bad situation, was able to rise above it and turn into a very productive quarterback, okay? Even Josh Allen came into a situation in Buffalo, which was not ideal, okay? Mm -hmm. 
uh, everyone has this idea that like Buffalo is a stable situation that was just churning out good season after good season. They are like what, a slightly step above the Browns in 2018. Like they weren't right. that good. Right. Like there's a there's a reason they ended up drafting a quarterback that year. It's because they needed one. Okay, they weren't a good team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. God, what the hell are the Panthers even doing, man? Like it, it wasn't that long ago when they brought Cam Newton back. I remember and they that. tried that experiment. Like they just keep bringing in like these toxic, like bad locker room guys, and it's just blowing up in their face. It's just like they, I don't know who who knows what the hell they're thinking down there. And I'm pretty know. sure their owners trying to get them a new stadium. This ain't the way to get support. I can tell you that much. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty pathetic. I mean, they have to be one of the worst ran fran- franchises in football right now. It's got to be like them. Uh, the Commanders, um, well, the Cowboys stepped in it the other day. They they made a very big mistake yesterday. Holy uh, shit, right? Oh, that, that was really bad. The Chargers are, are run poorly still. Uh, but, like, we look at this just like, okay, no wonder why you continue to suck. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. There Definitely. are organizations that are in this position because they put themselves there. Like, it. Mm-hmm. The, Panthers are one of those teams that, like, they are not a, a team that's been, you know, they haven't came across a bunch of misfortunes, like, one after the other or anything like that. Like, this has just been bad decision after bad decision and bad player and bad coach, and, and it's just a disaster. And that that's why, like, Cleveland turning the page and, like, having a good locker room and, and that type of winning culture really matters. And Baker isn't a guy that fits that type of culture. So. Yeah. This is a this is an addition by subtraction move for the Browns just by him leaving. The locker room is immediately better. So, mm-hmm. so let me ask you guys this: Considering what you all are saying about the Panthers, would you say that with their run to the Super Bowl in 2015 was the, one of the worst things that could happen to them? A run to the Super Bowl? No, that's not the the worst thing that's going to happen to them. But like. Well. The worst thing that happened to the Panthers is David Tepper bought the Panthers. Okay. That's the worst thing that happened to the Panthers. Yeah. They they have been so bad during his time with them. Hold on. Give me one second and I will have, um, I will have the, the numbers for you. Cause uh, Warren Sharp just tweeted them out a second ago. I got to refresh Twitter here. Oh, nice. um, what does he got to say? Uh, okay. David Tepper, the richest owner in the NFL bought the Panthers in 2018. Since they're 22 and 43, which is the fifth worst record in the NFL, they have zero winning seasons, zero playoff appearances, and won only five games for three straight years. And in 2022, they're favored in only two of 17 games. Mm. Wow. Wow. (laughs) They've they've had high draft picks in just about every draft. They had the seventh overall pick in 2020. They drafted a defensive tackle. Number eight in 2021, corner. Number six last year, an offensive tackle. Ooh. They know they didn't have a quarterback, and they did this. Have they had a good pick since Keekley? The Panthers? Uh, yeah. Uh, he was picked Thompson, by the Panthers, right? Jack Thompson? Keekley was drafted by the Panthers, He right? was. Uh, yeah. McCaffrey? Uh, McCaffrey, yeah. Yeah, but with the injuries and everything, that's kind of been a bust, too, almost. Uh, yeah, I guess talent-wise, McCaffrey for sure. But, yeah, um, yeah uh, other than me, I don't remember them drafting a dude. And it was like, oh, they made the right move here. That's the last time yeah. I remember them doing something that was like, oh, this is a good pick or this is a good move. Right. I actually just went on to ESPN to see which games the Panthers are favored in. I found Gil. Oh, no, wait, that's Dretton. Not Dretton. They're favored on Thursday night football when they host Atlanta. And they're favored – uh, by three and a half when they host the Detroit Lions. So two out of seventeen. Yes, that's hilarious. No, their, their draft their draft history is fucking terrible. I'm looking at it right now. It is so bad. It is so bad. It is bad. Uh, how about how about in, in, in back to back years in, in 2014 and 15 they go Kelvin Benjamin and Coney Ely. Okay, then 2015 they go Shaq Thompson and Devin Funchess. I mean, in in twenty in twenty uh in twenty fourteen, people were saying that was like a good pick at first. I was never a Kelvin Benjamin guy. That like guy at first, when he first like started, people were saying this guy was a good pick, and then over time, you saw how he wasn't that great. He was never. He was, good he, was never good. he was never. He was never going to be good. That was how come he kept thinking he was good. 
because people get so into to draft things. And here's the problem. Here's what happens with, with, with draft Twitter and draft analysis and everything like that. And I was thinking about this this morning, so this is actually perfect. Too many people get obsessed with just watching highlights. Okay. Yeah. They watch highlights. They don't watch the whole thing. Yeah. Highlights can talk you to anybody. Okay. And again, and I've said this before, they all they, they come up with this this their notebook and they're writing all these positives about the play. He can do this. He can do this. Tell me the negatives. Tell me the, what they can't do, because that will tell me whether or not he's draftable or not. Do you people come up with a list of positives? Give me the negatives, because if the negatives have one giant red flag, which is like that's a big problem, then he's undraftable. People don't come up with the list of negatives. Give me the list of negatives. You can give me all the positives you want because you can get talked into by positives. Tell me what he can't do. That's a fair way of looking at it. Um, I totally agree with that perspective too. I'll tell you why I asked the question originally about if the run for if the Super Bowl run was the worst thing that could have happened for the Panthers. Because when you make a run to the Super Bowl like that, you know they went what fifteen and one during the regular season. They looked like this unstoppable juggernaut. Like maybe they legitimately thought, okay, we can keep this going. And now it's come crashing back down to earth. So maybe they, I'm saying like that Super Bowl run perhaps raised their expectations too high. Yeah. If that makes sense. I'm I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there and say it raised their expectations too high. It's just that bad roster management is what leads to teams that make a Super Bowl run end up falling apart. Okay, we've seen it many, many times. A team makes it to the Super Bowl, they're not able to manage their, their roster properly, and the team comes crashing back down to earth so fast. A team can make a, a deep playoff run, and, and bad roster management can result in the team falling completely apart. Look at the Jaguars. They were like, we got Blake Bortles, we're good, instead of drafting a quarterback. They could have drafted a quarterback, and maybe they still have Miles Jack and Jalen Ramsey in that really good defense. But no, they said we're good with Blake Bortles. Right. You, you can't you can't make that mistake. If, if you, you can't say that we have a quarterback we can win with and identify him as your guy. You need the guy that you're winning because of when you're supposed to be making those deep runs, okay? Because when a team is making a deep run and you have – a team that's really good, but your quarterback's the one, yeah, but then you have a big problem. Okay. And, and the, the, you know, the big history, the big, you know, uh, sticking point in Cleveland with, with, you know, Baker Mayfield was, it was always, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but with everything. Okay. So if you can't manage your roster properly, when you have a, yeah, but quarterback, you fall apart. Yeah. So I totally hear what you're saying. Like, you know, Baker Mayfield was not a quarterback you win because of. Or, wait, I think I have that backwards. Baker Mayfield was Ooh, not. You're right. Okay. Like, when the Rams won the Super Bowl this year, I'll say their defense was a huge reason for that. But it was also, they won because of Matthew Stafford. When the, the Chiefs run of dominance, it's been because of Patrick Mahomes. The Packers making so many NFC championship games because of Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Like right. you could, you could say about a lot of guys. The the Browns didn't make the playoffs for the first time in however many years because Baker was a great quarterback. They made it because they had a good team in a weak division and yeah, things bounced their way and, and he was just good enough to win with. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And and that's that's how I saw it playing out. It, it was like he he was he was the right quarterback at the right time for, for us in that moment. But like in hindsight now, I mean, Josh Allen, obviously a better option. Lamar Jackson, obviously a better option. Like, so it's the writing's been on the wall really for a long time with him. It's just been delayed and delayed because of, you know, that early success that, you know, people wanted to accredit to him rather than accrediting to the team and the organization for putting together a good ball club. Right. It, and it, what what happened a lot of it in church you mentioned it he was the best quarterback uh, they've had in 99 but that's not an accomplishment. I'm sorry. Not really. It's not. Not really. It, that's it, just it, 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 He's still it, bad. He's it, just better than the worst. 
like it's just like it's just like uh that's the level of expectations we have because we were that desperate. It, he's the best quarterback of all time because he took us to the pl- playoffs the first time. We saw years. a guy whose peak is average, and we said, this yeah. guy is our savior, okay? And that's what we ended up with. Like, what are yeah. we doing? I don't yeah, know. It, if that's what Cleveland wants, if, if they're satisfied with, like, every 20 years making a playoff appearance – then yeah, keep Baker in town. You know, make him your guy. Le- let him lead the way. But but we want more than that. You know, and then this organization is their goals are bigger than that. And we saw once we finally went up against the team like the Chiefs, Baker wasn't good enough to take us up and over that hump and, and get us to the next level. So, it, you know, he's had opportunities to do it, and he he hasn't came through in those opportunities. So, it's not like he didn't have his chances here in Cleveland. Right. He got a fair shake, in my opinion. It, he right. did, and he, he didn't live up to expectations. He still led the league in interceptions since he was drafted. He still was one of the worst quarterbacks in the league in the fourth quarter. Like, yep. I, like the, the, this is facts. This is factual information. I don't care what PFF grades him as or what they have that, because they can just – they can manipulate numbers to make anybody look good. Okay? Right. They've done it so many times. I went on a little rant about it yesterday on Twitter. But – um that's what they do. So, and, and honestly, a lot of, you know, PFF guys have just like this hard on for Baker Mayfield. Okay. A lot of football analyst people do for some reason. And they're always like, Oh, he's got a strong arm. His st- arm strength is the most overrated aspect of him. I'm sorry, because he throws the ball hundred miles an hour to a guy five yards away from him. He's got a strong arm. How about he throws the ball downfield? That thing dies about halfway. Most of the time. Okay. His arm strength is the most overrated part of his game. Yeah, he definitely has a strong arm, but in terms of using it to his advantage, no, he he doesn't. You know, you just like you said, he has zero touch on passes inside of ten yards or fifteen yards, um, and when he does throw the deep ball, um, it's very it's not consistent. So yeah, can he huck it? You know, every once in a while, can he huck it seventy yards? Sure, but like most of the time, he hucks it and it goes fifty-seven yards and ends up in the hands of the wrong team. It's an arm punt is what it is. It is. Okay? It is. It's, a, it's a very long punt. That's a very good way to describe it. He, he's a glorified punter, Baker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go back and look at, for example, at the game from this past season against the Vikings. Like, he consistently threw oh, – overthrew Odell multiple times during that game where it was like the dude was wide open. He could have made a play if you threw him the ball – properly or right yeah the problem is is when you're not accurate and you increase your velocity it makes things worse you know what i mean like you're at you're making the problem worse when you you throw a bad ball harder uh and it, it's resulted poorly for him we've seen it with him like james said he's always you know thrown a lot of interceptions and, and that's why in those situations that he does Oh, hold on, hold on. I just saw this. Do you know who the Panthers offensive coordinator is? Not offhand, no. It's fucking Ben McAdoo. Oh, <laughs> oh God. What? Oh, man. I didn't as if, that. As if oh, you could God. get any worse. Oh, God. God. What the hell? I, are you? I remember that guy. It's going from Kevin Stefanski to Ben McAdoo. <laughs> What are they even doing? Oh my god! He's just god. Owner of football and he spends his money on garbage. Does oh. move the team, man? Move them out of Carolina. They don't deserve a team. Ben, point. Ben McAdoo, just like his presence, he got the look of like I'm gonna ruin that team. <laughs> he kind of does, doesn't he? Like yeah. I can't wait to do it. Right. And then right. When he, anxious what? to get in there and just it, cause havoc and as far as his playoff appearance goes that was all i would say that was that was mostly the team that was not him at all well he didn't play that's that's for sure he coached i didn't think he coached that team to the <laughs> to the playoffs that season there we go yeah. i get what you're saying yeah when he kind of like head- kind of like with the baker situation he's not what led the browns to the playoffs that season yeah he's he, he right you think he's like the quarterback, Ben McAdoo? Yeah. I, I was equating it to the situation of, of him. They're not winning because of him. They're winning with him. Yeah. Right. 
I would so. say the season we went to the playoffs, the Browns won, won, went to the playoffs because of their mostly because of their run game. And again, it was with Baker Mayfield, not because of. I would, right. in my opinion, it was because of the run game. Right. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I think we're all on the same page with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got so, next year. Um, Kevin Durant, he wants out of Brooklyn. I heard. Yeah, the Brooklyn situation is very interesting, and it just kind of gets more and more layers to it by the day, it seems like. Yeah. So Kyrie signs the big extension and remains in Brooklyn for now. You know, we still don't know if that ends up being, you know, permanent or what what have you. But um, And then KD requesting the trade, you know, which raised a lot of eyebrows because mm-hmm. once Kyrie signed that deal, it was kind of assumed by a lot of people that that meant that, you know, the band was going to stay together, but it uh, doesn't appear to be that way. Right. No, and Kyrie did not get a long-term contract with the Nets. He was just opting into his player option for, what was it, $36 million, $37 million, something like that. It sounds right, yeah. yeah. But yeah, this that, that came after the failure to uh, facilitate a sign-in trade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Like, though – I've heard so many different opinions about this from various talking heads, but the one constant that I've heard throughout this whole thing is, oh, this whole situation is Kyrie Irving's fault because, you know, it, him not getting the vaccine and the vaccine mandate by New York completely fractured the team and all this and that. I'm not going to say whether I agree with all that or not, but that's just a take I've heard from talking heads. So. Okay. Do you have an opinion? <laughs> I thought somebody was going to go off of that. Um, well, you brought up the take. Up. You brought the take up because you had an opinion on it. Yeah. But I think like the whole Kyrie thing had a big factor in this. I don't know if it was the whole like reason, but I think it was a major part of it. Arguably the biggest part, if you ask me. I wouldn't mind seeing Kyrie in uh, Cleveland taking that roster spot from Colin Sexton. Yeah, but it's but I don't know. Garland I, I'm happy with Garland. We'll get sure. to Garland in a, in a few minutes. But okay. uh uh Here's where I have an issue with Kevin Durant in this whole thing. Um, You think about it. Think about the teams that he primarily wants to get traded to. Phoenix and Miami. Well, they just so happen to be the number one seeds from the from the playoffs this past season. When he signed with Kevin with Golden State, were was it like Golden State was some bum ass team? No. They had just won. 73 a record setting 73 uh games the past season and were within one win of winning their second consecutive championship so and then kevin durant says okay i'm gonna go to brooklyn because i want to build my own legacy like i want to have my own team well by saying you want to go to phoenix to possibly play with devin booker chris paul Maybe DeAndre Ayton. We'll see what happens there. Or by saying you want to go to Miami to play with Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, maybe Kyle Lowry, maybe Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, whatever. That's not you making your own legacy, Kevin Durant. That's you, you know, almost hurting your own legacy in a way. Yeah. Well, I mean, if if his objective is to win rings – then of course the people at the top of his wish list are going to be the teams that are in position to win. So it, it makes sense that, that they are, you know, I don't necessarily think that the only reason he picked them is because they were the first seed in each conference. I, I don't think that the seeding is all, especially this year, I think the seeding was pretty fraudulent to be fair. Mm-hmm. So I, I think there's a little more to it than that. You know, it's not just him going to the best team and, and like him going to Golden State was like that. That was totally different because they were just a juggernaut. You know what I mean? Like, 
are, are Phoenix and Miami good? Yeah, but are they anywhere near that Golden State team? No. So I don't think this is as like negative ring chasey, like joining up with the best player in the league type, you know, that people are making it out to be. Okay. I that's a fair criticism and I get that. Um he did mention Golden State though. He's interested in going back to Golden State. So, uh, you know, if he goes back there then yeah, I mean he's obviously changed his opinion on the way that he felt about having his own thing, you know. Maybe he's yeah. reprioritized and realized that he, maybe he realized nobody can win it on their own, you know. How about him in Washington yeah. though? Him That's where? hilarious. Is what that would be. In you, you like him in Washington in his hometown. No. Oh, they, they're terrible. The Wizards, the Wizards are terrible. They're they're yeah. awful. You don't no think team. him and Bradley Beal would be a great duo? Oh, what about the rest of the team? Yeah. The team's yeah. trash. Right. Yeah. The rest of the team is out there at a time. The rest of the team is awful. So yeah. you know, look at the look at three of the four teams that have inquired about Kevin Durant. Three of the four of them are good. The fourth one isn't good as that much. The four, the one that's not that good is Toronto. Right. Okay. But it, you know, it's Phoenix, Golden State, Miami. They're all good. He's right. looking at teams that are a good, b have depth. Okay. You can make a team good. Well, yeah, he's obviously going to make a team better if he joins a bad team, but like it. You know, the difference between like going to a good team and having that team be actually good, and LeBron leading the 07 Cavs to the finals and then getting swept, okay? Right. Because that's exactly the type of situation he would have in Washington. Is right. he would it would be him and Beal if he's still there, and a whole bunch of nobodies, and it, whenever well, they raise a good team in the playoffs, yeah, they're done. He'll average 50 points per game in the in the finals of the the Eastern or Western Conference or whatever, and still lose. Like that's how it works when you, you go to a team that you're the only guy or you're one of only two. Like you, you have to have depth. Right, like James, you just mentioned how LeBron was basically all we had in 07 when we got swept by the Spurs. When Kawhi went to Toronto and led the Raptors to the championship, which again. They would have lost if Golden State was fully healthy. I think we can all agree on that one. But yeah. that was an anomaly. Like, Kawhi, like, that normally doesn't happen, right? Where you make a massive trade like that and then immediate Im- impact. Like, Kawhi was, at least from my take, Kawhi felt like a one-man band in the finals against the Warriors. Yeah, but they had depth. They were a deep team, you know, and they, they played well together. Like it, that was – they had a really good winning culture there in Toronto at the time. Like it, it – it's not like he did it all by himself, you know. I And I do think a lot of it had to do with injuries on the other side of things too. Right. So, yeah, I don't necessarily think like Kawhi going there is, is the only reason that they won the title that year. It's part of it. It's obviously a big part of it, but it, it, it is swapping out DeRozan for Kawhi is, is I think is the, the big thing. It's not just Kawhi going there. It's it's removing DeRozan from the equation and replacing right. him with a, a much more rounded and significantly better player in Kawhi. Right. Right. Okay. Proven winner yeah. too. Like DeRozan, he's not. He hasn't been on a winner yet. Like you know what I mean. He's he's been on good teams, but like even like that Chicago team, they were kind of like a paper tiger. And when it comes time, you know, to play playoff basketball, he's not, he's not a winner, you know. No. Like, I, I, like I think DeRozan's a good player, but I don't think DeRozan's a guy that you're building your team around. Right, to, that's what I'm getting at. To, to to take it to that next level, he's a guy you add to. Yeah. He's the no, he's the guy you use to add to your existing roster. You're not adding players to your roster to complement him. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah, he's a complimentary player. He's never going to be the number one, uh, you know, guy on any given five uh, five man roster, or, or you know, a team that's going to win anything of of significance. Right. It, he reminds me a lot of uh, Carmelo Anthony. Is what he reminds me a lot of. Just a, a guy that's good, but he's not going to be the guy that takes you to where you want to go. He's yeah. got to be the guy that compliments somebody else that takes you where you want to go. Still could be a Hall of Famer. Colin Sexton too. You know, yeah, that no. guy really productive, yeah. but not not in a way that's significant. You know, yeah, 
I agree 100% with you on that one, Brian. Yeah. Um, we know you but, love Colin Sexton, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You do. You think he should start this year? They should keep him and he should be a starter? Should he be a Hall of Famer? Oh, boy. Can we start with just should he start? <laughs> yeah. Do you think so? You really think so? He should be a no. starter for the Cavs? No. I'm asking Kirk. Oh, what? No. I, I mean, eh, depending on the team he's with and what the fit is. The, the, the Cavs. The Cavs. No. No? Okay, cool. Okay. Well, then you are on the same page. I thought you were the only one there that was kind of going against yeah. the green. But. Well, welcome to the right side of history. Uh, I've been on this for a while, uh, considering the most of the topics we've discussed here today. Uh, best to hop on my thought process. Um. <laughs> Many snaps for James. Uh, kudos to me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? Is this now the James show? This is the James taking victory laps because I got tired of people saying the bullshit on Twitter for years. Okay. Yeah. You've been, you haven't changed your tune on Colin Sexton once since the beginning of last year. No, I, I haven't changed my tune on Colin Sexton for, before I even met any of you people. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You, you've been very consistent with the fact that you didn't think that, that he was a guy that was going to, you know, be a part of a winning team. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just don't think that he fits into this this roster. Uh, it, it doesn't make sense for him to stay here in Cleveland. Um, and I think with you know Garland obviously being the guy in the five year max deal that they signed him to, it's uh, it, I wouldn't be surprised if we we part ways with Sexton soon. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about that. They they signed the right guard to the max extension. Okay, right. mm -hmm. and, and that would be Darius Garland. Yep. Yeah, I don't and, think anybody's going to argue that. He's definitely the better player. Right. Five-year, $193 million deal. Okay. Right. And so Jared Allen good. has his extension. Garland has his extension. How soon until we hear about Evan Mobley getting his extension? What, two, three years? Uh, whatever his contract yeah. is. Um, yeah, he's only in his second year of his rookie contract, so it'll be a minute. So Gar this is Garland just finished his third year. So two more years for you talking about rookie uh, eligible extension, I think. Yeah. Okay. So we have some time. And, and so the, the point here in regards to, you know, Sexton and whether or not they, they should do anything with him is you, you got to keep in mind money that you have to earmark for other players down the road. You're, Evan Mobley is going to be a guy you're going to extend. Okay. Yeah. We, yeah. We've already identified that. Okay. Uh, it, it, we're going to have to add other players via trade, uh, through free agency, through the draft, who are going to have to get paid, okay? And if it's through free agency, you're going to have to overhead because that's just how it is. And yeah, anytime you go through free agency. You're going to need money to, to add a player that fits, and it's going to cost a lot of money. So I'd rather have that money available to do that than pay a guy like Colin Sexton money he probably shouldn't be making for a role that he shouldn't be in. Yeah, that that's that's the thing. When anytime you're dealing with a cap, you know you you have to allocate your money to the right people. You know, and it, it's not always about how much this individual is making. It's about how much of this resources that we're giving to this player is taking away from resources we could you know add to another player. Mm -hmm. um, and you know that when you have a guy like Garland and a guy like Sexton that are you know similar in ways, you kind of have to make your decision on one or the other because it's not feasible to to give them both max deals, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, I'm kind of surprised too, there's no real traction on anybody, you know, wanting Sexton yet. I thought that there would be a little bit more demand in the market than there is. The Mavs uh, inquired about a potential sign and trade, but the Cavs are apparently not interested in anything the Dallas has to offer. Yeah. But, you know, th that's really the only thing I've seen of anyone being like. Yeah. Because it's been just crickets. Yeah, I haven't heard much of anything about him potentially signing anywhere. So mm -hmm. it's an interesting situation because it it seems like the writing is definitely on the wall, but like there's there's no smoke here with anybody, you know, picking up steam towards trying to acquire him. Mm -hmm. I right. mean, we, we heard a lot of you know conversations during the season and early on in the off season of you know Sexton uh, wants twenty million or upwards, you know, of that. Then, like, a week ago, there was, like, uh, some executive said, like, 
10 million bucks is the most I'd pay him. Like that guy knows what the fuck he's talking about because I mean, say what you want. The guy's either going to be a a starting guard on a really bad team or a backup guard on a good team in a six man role. Okay. Right. That's it. Yeah. I agree. Let's just trade him to the Orlando magic and get a second round pick for him. There you go. It clears clutter. I think they do yeah. need to clear some clutter, and I think he would qualify as clutter. Yeah, um, I'd be okay with that, Josh. I'm not opposed. Yeah, to that. You, you you look at the the guards that the the Cavs currently have. I mean, Ricky Rubio's back. Uh, they have Karis Levert under contract. They drafted Abaji. Like, where's the minutes? Where's the playing time? Right. Yeah, and don't forget Okoro. He's more of a small forward than a guard. Rondo's still on the roster. No, uh, okay. no, that's so. Good. Does so he finally? Ask, play? That guy needs to end his playing career. Yeah. So let me ask you this, James, since you just clarified or classified a Coro as a small forward, could you see a situation where we possibly get rid of Lowry Marketing, put a Coro at the starting small forward, and then have either a Baji or Lavert as the starting shooting guard? Could you see a scenario like that? Move it. They don't need to, to do either of those. They don't need to do the former to make the latter happen. Okay. Right. Um, so I don't think they're necessarily all that motivated to move Markin in right now, even though I would love for them to do that because I hated that Man. signing. Yeah. Um, but if you move Markin in and you had to put a core on the starter, you, 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 you didn't make your team better by that. Yeah. You're not getting much production offensively from this that position at it, all. The, the reason they have uh, Markin in, in the starting lineup is because he can shoot threes. Okay, yeah. even though he even though he was not really that great at it last year, and you know he predictably uh, fell off from a career year yeah. the year before. Like, what are we doing? Like, you, yeah. you can't just remove him, and put a Coro in there who's not an offensive, you know. Anything. He's not an offensive anything. He's a non-entity on offense. <clears throat> like, so they're not going to do that. I mean, uh, as far as who their, their second guards, I don't know who their second guard's going to be because they, they really don't have someone who who should be their, their second guard, you know. Um, Rubio, if he's healthy. Uh, but yeah. they like him for that, that uh, the point guard off the bench role, which I think he's perfect for. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. that's what you meant. Uh, yeah. Uh, I meant like shooting guard, like, like oh, two. the second guard off the yeah, match. Yeah, okay, I got you. Uh, but, guard off yeah, the but and uh, from what I've seen in summer league, they've been working a lot with uh, Abaji and you know him being a, a ball dominant player. So you know, looking at some of these other guys on the on the team, mainly Sexton, like I've said it before, Department of Redundancy Department. Yeah. Like, yeah, the the only problem with like Abaji stepping in for Markinen is like Markinen's six eleven and Abaji is you know barely six foot five, yeah. so it's a big big size difference there, um, and we don't know what kind of three point shooter Abaji is going to be in the NBA. Um, hopefully, he can contribute, but you know he doesn't offer you that same element of like a big tall stretch forward like Markinen. Even though he's not a great stretch forward, he still offers you that threat. He still has the potential to hit that deep ball in the corner. Mm-hmm. So. He still does things for your offense off the ball just by being out there that having a Baji or a Coro out there on offense don't do. So even though I don't particularly care for Markinen, like it, he's the best option out of the three right now, I think. And I know yeah. we're like, what, probably like eight months away from the trade deadline in the NBA season. But, yeah. you know, by the time that happens, I think this Cavs roster is going to look a whole hell of a lot different than what it does right now. I think so too. Uh, I I think they're going to identify who they are going to be their foundational players. So they want to be their future guys and the guys they want to move on from. And, 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 you know, uh, and, uh, and be able to get other players that complement who they want to build around better. Right. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. Like hopefully they, hopefully they take out the trash known as Chetty Osman. And uh, there's, there's just a lot of overlapping skill sets. And, and, and the problem with a lot of those guys, those overlapping skill sets is they're not good enough to, to warrant playing one over the other, uh, you know, definitively. Yeah. You know, right. It, it's just, 
you know, you, you, you got to do something. You can't just keep piling on the same guy and have a whole bunch of guys that are like, yeah, we have a whole bunch of role-playing guards or a whole bunch of role-playing, uh, you know, uh, small forwards. Like you, you need to make that, that upgrade, that jump. Like it's great. The Cavs went from garbage to, you know, fun this year, but yeah. go from fun to good. You gotta, you gotta make some adjustments to your roster. And they said right. they that yet. Yeah. Look at what Atlanta did. They went out and traded for DeJounte Murray to go along with Trey Young. Yeah. Same thing with Minnesota. I don't understand why they traded for Rudy Gobert. I think. Yeah, that one made no sense. I mean, I guess some, they're probably going to switch Carl Anthony Towns to power forward now. That's, That's what they're going to do. They're 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 kind of going to just change things a little bit. Uh, you know, their lineup wise. Uh, because let's let's be honest. Uh, you know, Carl Anthony Towns as their center, he's fun. He's good. No defense. He's not making an impact enough to warrant him being their you know their starting five. And yeah. so hopefully him being their starting four, his size, his skill set will create some mismatches in their favor. Yeah, and he's a and Gobert's a rim protector and Carl Anthony Towns, like you can just get him to jump and then go around him. Yeah, but he, here's the problem I have with Minnesota doing this trade. They gave up a shit ton to get him. Like they gave up what? Like five first round picks, multiple players. So I get it. They're going all in on uh Ant, Anthony Edwards. They're going all in on uh Cat, Carl Anthony Towns, but we don't know if D'Angelo Russell is still going to be there. I've heard mm-hmm. there's question marks about him. And who else are they gonna put around Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns? Like, I don't see any complimentary players. So I'm not necessarily saying Minnesota got worse, but by the same token, I don't know if they got necessarily better either. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. I mean, the the Timberwolves, they're – Here's what I'll say. In regards to uh, to relevance, they're still not relevant. No. I agree with you there. Like, I don't view them – after this trade, I don't view them as like, oh, my God, the Timberwolves are now a title contender. No. <laughs> Anybody who views the Timberwolves as a legit title threat after this trade, they are delusional and, yeah. They are probably high on LSD or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they 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 have some, I guess, decent supporting people, but they need they need more. Is what Minnesota needs. That's what Minnesota needs. They, they need a lot more. Exactly. Yeah. So. Anyway, so uh, what's next on the rundown? <laughs> let's uh let's talk about uh uh nba 2k covers oh, oh yeah michael Jordan got announced as the 2k 23 cover athlete. so does that mean we're gonna get back a good 2k again no 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 uh, no ah i thought that was gonna happen because i remember nba 2k 11 was was a great game I mean, that was one of my favorites. 2K hasn't been good in a long time. It hasn't. It it, 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 it has Madden. Madden hasn't either, but it, 2K has not been good in a long time. And it's just like, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get the same, you're the same game again. You're going to get the, the same, you know, problems same. that the game has again. The same bump and, skills, the same animations the same it's you just throw the not, ball out of bounds it, it's just not a good game it's, it's not, not a good game. It, and like it's awesome that the, you know they're putting him on the the cover of the end uh, michael jordan edition the championship edition of the game but like that's just done for one thing and that's to sell money that's all 2k has been focused on which i get it they're a business they're they should be focused on making money yeah but th- 
they're unfortunately their their focus has been more on making money rather than putting out a good product because honestly if they put out a good product they would end up making more money than focusing on shit like this and microtransactions okay yeah th th that's the problem i've had not just with 2k but just the gaming industry i mean mm -hmm. the, the fact is we the the thing is it used to be about like just making a good game and yeah profits came along with it which is how it should be but now it turned into what it is today, and it's just awful. Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. It, they used to be innovative and like creative, and now they're just stuck with the same shit over and over again. And that's over and what, over, that's what we get. We're gonna get more of the same bad product uh, when it's all said and done. Yeah. And yet, you know, people are gonna keep continue to go out and buy these games, and of course. Of yeah. course. They're gonna say, oh, NBA 2K20. I have the newest. Exactly. Exactly Keeping right. They're gonna, they're gonna go out and say, oh, NBA 2K23 is out with Michael Jordan on the cover. I gotta go out and buy it. Or like you have the WNBA fan who's gonna see that Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi are on the cover, and they'll go out and buy the game. By the way, bring Brittany Griner home. Bring Brittany Griner. I agree with you on that, Josh. Yes, 100%. Bring Brittany Griner home. Free her. Um, just wanted to put that out there. Anyway, so, but it's the same thing with Madden, too. Like, you know, Madden 23 is going to come out or whatever they're going to call it. And I'm going to I saw oh. some gameplay of that, and they have the guy on the cover, and it feels like a disgrace a little bit. I mean, that game. Right. Like that game's not going to be good either. Respect. It's not. It, it, I already knew it wasn't going to be good the moment I saw they still had those stupid icons under the players. Okay? This is those icons are terrible. Yeah. The, 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 they're, they, they focused way too much on making an arcade-style football game rather this than making a simulation style. It's terrible. Um, to the man who's on the cover. This is disrespect. They haven't had a good game in seven years. Yeah, since like uh, the one with Adrian Peterson on the cover was the last good one I can remember. Remember that one? I, uh, I would say the last good one was the Tom Brady cover. Eh, I mean, it wasn't one. awful, but that, it, that, that was the one. That was the last one I played a whole bunch. Was that one? Bring, do you remember the old Maddens when you can like when you like uh, get like the ball carrier and like you bump into him, and he just falls backwards. I mean, yeah, all those games are full of glitches. I've I've had tons of glitches playing those no, games too. It was like the the chain game, like when you like go into them out of bounds, they would like jump out of the way or whatever. Or the coaches mm -hmm. would too. You remember yeah. those days? I, I do. And the helmets would come off. The uh, last Madden game I played was when Patrick Mahomes was on the cover. I mean, I no played one? the last couple, but I I have the the EA Access thing that I paid for. Okay, so I can download the game without actually playing it and get like 10 X free hours before I have to pay for it. And that's what I play. And and I real I get a feel for the game, realize it sucks, then delete it. Yeah. And that's and all you back. can do. Now, how about Madden NFL 2K? How would that be? Okay, you've just crossed over two separate franchises. Well, yeah. the thing that is, like, 2K football could always come back. I mean, it's not going to, Chirk. No. It, it's dead. It's you dead. Know, it's dead. I miss it. It's it's you, dead. Kirk, 2K is seems to be strictly focused on the NBA. Although they're like we said earlier, they're not putting out good games. Uh the last and it will be. I couldn't tell you the last time I played NBA 2K20, actually. It's been a I just recently got back on my PS4 and I've only been playing MLB 19 the show, I believe it is. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why. I took a long break from my PlayStation. Sometimes you need to. You got but, to. But, you know, but, I mean, come on. Uh, jerk, they haven't, made, they haven't made a football game in 20 years. They haven't made a baseball game in a decade. Okay, like, it, it's, 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 time, it's time to give it up on 2K play. doing anything else. College hoops, do you remember that? I never played those games. I never played the college football games, the college basketball games, because they didn't entertain me well hey i know there's this there's this big like 
you know, like movement on the internet for the college football game and it's back now and shit. But like, I don't care. I really don't. Those games don't do anything for me. I don't either. I agree with like, you. I, I can only play so many games with, with, with fake player names or quarterback number four. Oh, that was fun. Receiver number two. Okay. And and then what about – and the best was when the announcers, like, called him out. That was even funnier. Like, I just – it never that? did anything for me. I know a lot of people love, you know, college football and stuff like that or college basketball. It's just – it's not – it, the games just don't do anything for me. Or, they so don't. they bring back NFL Blitz? No. Blitz the league? No. All right. Well, hey, speaking of, hey, speaking of college football, um, we are getting conference realignment seemingly left and right because now the Big Ten is going to be expanding all the way out to California. USC and UCLA are coming into the conference. Hmm. And – it sounds like maybe we're going to get Oregon and Washington also joining the Big Ten, although now the Big 12 is recruiting them. So we'll see. But, uh, yeah, I think we're on the way to two super conferences, the Big Ten and the SEC. I mean, let's let's look at what does this do for the Big Ten? Nothing. It essentially doesn't do anything. You added two like middle of the pack teams. Okay, uh, they're they're not they're not good. USC is a USC is a brand. Okay, you added a brand. They're not a good football program. They haven't been a good football gro- program in a while. Okay, like they, it doesn't do anything for me. Okay, uh, UCLA doesn't do anything for me. You know what you just added? You added 10 p.m. kickoffs to Big Ten schedule. Okay, and that's that that's shit. Okay, nobody wants that. I will say this, you know, everybody, I get it. Everybody's looking, immediately looks at the college football aspect of it. And I get it. College football is huge in this country. But think about it. UCLA basketball is historic. They were just recently in the final four and they probably would have won the national champion. Actually, I shouldn't say they probably would have won the championship because Baylor was just really good that year. But anyway, like they've been good the past few seasons. And I don't get why everybody's only focusing on the college football aspect of this and not like college basketball or the other sports. Because because football matters all the time. What? College basketball doesn't? Not really. College basketball ma- matters for like a month a year. And that's it. College bet of college football can get talked about twelve months a year. Yeah, it really can. Mm-hmm. College basketball can. It's it's only talked about during March. Mm-hmm. That's and, it. You know, when's the, last time, when's the last time uh, uh, UCLA won a title? What was? Oh last? God, nineteen ninety five. Nineteen ninety five. Nineteen ninety five. Last time they won a title. Wow. I, I thought it was going to be like 2000s or something, but 95? And before that, it was 1975. Wow. Oh, good Lord. Like, um, sure, they're historic, but they have they really yeah, they're, been? They're, they're one of the best, like, yeah, they're one of the best uh, campuses in, in the nation, but, yeah. I mean, I, I hear your argument, James, about, that, like, the Big Ten just adding two brands because – now you put, you know, the the Coliseum in Big Ten country. You put Pauley Pavilion, UCLA's uh, basketball stadium, in the Big Ten. You put the Rose Bowl into the Big Ten. I so I hear what you're saying about the brand, but think about think about this aspect though. Now that you bring in Los Angeles schools like Ohio State, Michigan. Wisconsin, teams like that can go into the L.A. market and actually try to recruit these guys. Whereas- I mean, that, that doesn't really matter that much anymore in the modern age. I mean, you, recruiting has has gone way past connections and, and pipelines. The, this isn't like the 1950s anymore where you need to you know be playing those teams to, to make an impact. The Internet exists, okay? 
email exists, phone, cell phones exist. The, the, you know, you're able to get in touch with whoever the, whoever the hell you want. You know, the, the big schools are aware of the players that are good everywhere in the country. OK, mm -hmm. it, it isn't just in your home state or the states that are connected to you. It, it doesn't it, when it's where what type of school is your school good? Then you're going to recruit a player that's good from any state in the country. It doesn't matter where you play. Yeah, recruiting got a lot less nat or uh, regional since the the innovation of like Twitter and social media and all that. Like, it, it used to be a, a big resource issue for for these recruiters to travel out of state and pay for gas and travel and lodging and all this stuff. And it, it's not quite like that anymore. You know, a lot of these meetings are done over Zoom. Like, it, they're not always in person. Um, and now with NIL, it's even more. You know wild wild west in terms of guys going across the country and here and there um yeah so i think like kids motivations on where they pick their school is different now so just because usc and uh, ucla are in the big 10 i don't necessarily think that means more california kids are going to go to wisconsin or nebraska i still don't think they're gonna have any interest whatsoever uh in playing in some of those podunk markets it, it, if anything it's gonna be the complete opposite yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> And what have I talked about too is like when you add teams to to things, you dilute the product a little bit, you know. And mm -hmm. when you have a twenty team Big Ten, where Ohio State is already the top heavy dominant champion of the division year in and year out for the past twenty years, you know they're just gonna the the gap between them and Rutgers is just getting bigger and bigger. You know what I mean? It, it not is. throwing it, USC and U, uh, UCLA in the mix that uh, you know are historically better programs than them, so. I mean, the, the one thing it's going to do is the teams that are at the top of the conference, uh, uh, Ohio State, uh, Michigan's had a nice little run uh, this last year. Congratulations for them. Uh, Wisconsin being the, the continuous uh, team that, you know, wins between eight and ten games a year. It's just going to boost them. It's not going to be – it's gonna, just going to make their records look better. It's not going to do anything for a USC or a UCLA, okay? Yeah. Uh, you know – uh, when Ohio State gets back to their rightful spot in the top of the conference, and after they beat the fuck out of USC wherever they play them, it's just going to make Ohio State look better because instead of beating Rutgers forty nine to nothing, they beat USC thirty five to seven. Right. I can't right. wait till USC gets off the plane in like twenty degree weather against Minnesota in late December. I tell you what, a lot of people that that would have liked to play at USC now that they're not playing in the Pac-12 and traveling to all those warm weather places, you know, that might be a real thing. They might struggle to get recruits that don't want to go play in Ann Arbor and Columbus. And you really can't blame guys. You know, a lot of guys don't do well in cold weather. Right. Um, do you think the big, so we don't know what's going to happen with Notre Dame. Cause the way Notre Dame is stay independent. They're staying independent. They're not going to do anything. You don't think they're getting, the Big Ten's going to succeed in bringing them in? They've been flirting with Notre Dame for 30 years, and they still haven't got here, okay? Like, it, it's it's not going to happen, okay? Notre Dame stays independent because Notre Dame makes more money being independent, okay? That's why. They can do whatever the hell they want. They can schedule an entire season of cupcake teams, play one game against USC, and make the college football playoff every year. Yeah, until someone like NBC decides they're no longer going to give them money to make them a nationally televised product, they're they're going to stay independent, you know, because they're getting more money to do things their way, um, and they have a lot more freedom to choose their opponents and where they play and all of that stuff. So, yeah, they they don't stand to gain anything by by joining the Big Ten in this situation, in my opinion. Um, and in terms of other sports, they've already joined in, in hockey, you know, for example. They are a Big Ten team in hockey. Uh, and then in basketball, they what? They were ACC last year, weren't they? Or, yeah. yeah. So they, they messed around with, like, other Notre Dame sports, like joining conferences. But football, they never touch. They're, so they're I not going to. It would happen now if it was. It, 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 they're not going to. I mean, uh, Penn State was just dumb enough to join the Big Ten when they tried when they you know got them to join the conference uh, 25 years ago. Okay, like that's just the way it is. Uh, Notre Dame stays being independent because they can play service academies and in one good team a year and, and call it a year. Yeah. yeah. Like right now, if Penn State were to join a conference they would be contractually obligated to join the ACC because of what you were saying earlier, uh, Brian. Like, 
most of their sports are in the ACC. Co- mm-hmm. Like college football, for example, they are in the ACC. But football remains independent. So, if based off what you're hearing or what you're saying, the Big Ten should just try and bring in Oregon and Washington. I don't care about those teams, honestly. They don't do anything for me. You you're, you want more middle of the road teams? Yeah. Like, cool. Like, you bring the team that has ten thousand uniform combinations. You have you bring in the other team that's good once a decade. Like, we already yeah. have Wisconsin. Okay, why do, why do we want the Western West Coast Wisconsin? Why do we want that? Right. Oh, this comment was for me while I was uh, away. I love, <laughs> I, I love this comment. If they don't, yeah, if they don't make USC versus MSU an every year rivalry game in football and have it be a trophy game for a Trojan horse, what the fuck are we even doing bringing them into the Big Ten? Because this is the best potential trophy game ever. I mean. Yeah. It's the Trojan War. It's the Spartans versus the Trojans. It's oh, only if they unveil a, a giant, very, very clingy plastic thing off of the horse before the the game. <laughs> only, yes. only, only if yes. they do. Oh that. my god! <laughs> wow. But yeah, I, I think that the big thing that the Big Ten is doing right now is they're trying to compete with the SEC. Uh, and the SEC has quality, you know, and, and when you add these middle of the road teams or low end of the road teams, like the Washingtons and Washington States and Oregon, like it, you're really not competing with the SEC in that way. Like you're not adding products that make the conference stronger. You're just adding more, you know, regional nonsense. I mean, cause you look at what really the SEC added. They added teams that are, that are, that are one, a brand two are usually good in three. They're in football hot bets. Okay. I like this. I think Notre Dame would be a good fit in the back. What do you guys think? <laughs> My dad's not a big Notre Dame fan. Uh, he gets a lot of shit from Notre Dame fans at work. So, yeah. I think Mac, Mac would be a perfect fit in terms of talent-wise. So, good, good shout-out there. Yeah, awesome shout-out. Put them in a school with Akron and Kent State, Toledo. That's basically who they play anyway. I mean, they, they this is what they do. They make their own schedule. They they line themselves up against cupcakes, or <laughs> they they make games with uh, big name schools that no longer are really that good, mm-hmm. uh, like their run that they had with games against Michigan and games against USC when we were down. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's what Notre Dame does. They they yeah. play easy opponents and. The other thing by staying independent they don't got to worry about is this, like, well, what if you don't win your conference controversy? You know, like, at the end of the season, they don't have to worry about winning a conference championship game and having that debate, like, oh, well, do we put them in the playoff if they didn't win their conference, yada, yada, yada. They don't have to go through any of that. So I I think that they're going to stay put as long as they can. Yeah, I would agree with you. Um, But I don't think we're done with teams jumping conferences and all that. No. My guess is Clemson is going to leave the ACC and join probably the SEC. Um, I think Why Oregon. How would they do that? Why would they do that? Why would they do that? They're the king of the ACC right now. They should stay where they're at. That, that's well, there's, a death there's, sentence. There's no reason for them to leave. They stay in the terrible ACC. They win their conference every year. They get into the the, the college football championship. Like going to the SEC is dumb. That's yeah. that, that'd be a terrible decision. Yeah, I'm I think not- Florida State and Clemson and Miami, like they, they should stay as far away from the SEC as they can. Yeah. I'm not suggesting that it would be the right move for them to do, but I think the ACC is crumbling right under their own feet, and Clemson's going to see that and be like, well, shit, we don't want to stick around here. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah, no, we have to play yeah. lesser, more lesser opponents. Who cares? Yeah, who cares? Like, so, so they play even shittier teams. Like the, the ACC sucks already. Like, mm-hmm. so what? The, they have to play even worse teams. Like, they're oh no, we're going to be undefeated every year. How terrible! Yeah, yeah. I think that Clemson's in a really great spot right now, uh, unless something happens like the ACC dissolving, like you say, Josh, which is very possible. It may not last. Then they may be forced to make a decision. 
but in terms of like what's mm-hmm. right for them right now, like the this is the perfect scenario for them, you know. Oh yeah, I agree with you, but I think it's only a matter of time before the ACC, right, yeah. ACC dissolves. So I'm not suggesting that like tomorrow Clemson should jump ship and go to the SEC. But I think it it feels like an inevitable thing that will happen eventually. Yeah. Basically. They're the biggest name in the ACC right now, so it makes sense. Them exactly. or Florida State or Miami, you know, those are the three big names. Outside People are of trying to put North Carolina into that mix, too. Yeah. Now they can keep playing basketball in North Carolina. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, I think we're going to transition to Major League Baseball now. And Brian and James, I have a task for you. I'm going to give you a mystery team's schedule for the remainder of July and the beginning of August. Okay? Go ahead. (laughs) All right. Cool. You've got two guesses. Try and figure out which team it is. Cool? Okay. So let me pull them up. This is great content. All right. All right. So they're finishing up a three-game series against the Tampa Bay Rays right now. Over the weekend, they played the Yankees for four. Then they played the Rays again for four. And then at New York, all-star break, three against Toronto, four against Cleveland, three against Milwaukee. It's the Red Sox. Yep. You said you made it too easy. You said they're playing Tampa right now. Anybody who knows who Tampa played last night knows it's the Red Sox. Good point. You mentioned every other AL East team as well. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay. So maybe that was a miss. Well, oh well. But hey, you, uh, gotta try, you gotta try something new every once in a while. So A for effort, buddy. Yeah, A for effort. Uh, F on execution, though. No, I, you have this fascination with the schedule that that not many of us share with you. <laughs> That's part of the problem. Anyway. Um, you probably have every schedule memorized, do you not? <laughs> no, not even close. No? Nope. Um, <laughs> but the reason I wanted to do that is the Red Sox are a really fascinating team right now. Like, you look at them – they're not a team you want to see in the playoffs. They have been getting hot at the right time. Uh, great. They just swept us recently. Granted, with how the Guardians are playing, I don't know if that says very much. But you look at the way the Red Sox are playing, though. <laughs> who wants to play them? They're, I mean, they're exactly who we kind of thought they would be, though. You know, we, we knew that they were going to be good. Um, it, it's not any big surprise to me that they're they're in second place in the division right now. But, I mean, the Yankees won the division, let's be honest. Like, oh, everybody, yeah. else, everybody else in that division is competing for a wild card spot. Um, but, yeah, you're right. I mean, the, the Red Sox are hot right now. They're a team that not a lot of people want to play against. Um, so it makes sense why you pick them to be one of the teams to look at. Yeah. But they did lose last night, 8-4. Yeah. Um, but you think about it, like, the de- who do you – the debate is always going to be Devers or Ramirez. And so, But in addition to Devers, they've got Xander Bogarts. They've got Trevor Story, uh, J.D. Martinez. Nick Pavetta has been really good for them pitching-wise. And Alex Cora, basically, except for his whole cheating thing, he's been the right manager for the job in Boston. Yeah, I mean, they're a pretty loaded team. They've got weapons up and down that lineup, and um, they're right where they should be, really. Uh, Looking at, they're, what, 45 and 36. So, yeah, I mean, they're right, right where they should be with the roster that they're putting out there every day. Um, but in terms of the the thing you've started with, Devers versus Ramirez, I mean, I think it's Ramirez by a long shot, mm-hmm. in my opinion. 
You think Dev or Ramirez by a long shot over Devers? Yes. Yes, I do. Yeah, I can see. Do you, do, you is there, do you want to counter that with something or no, I, I don't think that's even a little bit of a shocking statement. I think that that's, I mean, find me someone who disagrees. That doesn't live in Boston. That doesn't <laughs> live in Boston. Exactly. Right. So are you basing that statement off of like the whole package? Cause I think a lot of the people who are in Devers camp for this argument um, are just looking at the offensive side of that. Like when you when you try to make an argument like this, you have to look at both offensive and and the uh defensive side of the ball. Yeah, but he's not offensively better than Ramirez. Like it may be in one category, like his batting average is higher. But like he, he, I don't know other offensive parts of his game where I would say that he's better than Ramirez outside of just batting for a better average maybe. Mm. Uh, you look at Jose, he leads the American League in RBIs. He, he hits plenty of home runs. Uh, he usually steals 20 to 30 bases a year. Uh, you know, I, I don't see anything offensively that Devers does that Ramirez doesn't do outside yeah. of the fact that Devers has a really good batting average right now. But that's that's one stat, you know. Yeah, I don't know. What do you do? Am I am I missing something here, James? Are you on the fence I'm about it? I'm pulling up numbers. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, Devers does have a better batting average right now. Um, let's see. Uh, they're tied for uh, the AL lead in doubles. Uh, he Devers has one more home run. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I take Jose. E- even with Jose's little slump that he's been in and yeah by the way his slump he still has like i think 21 hits in 27 games and we're like right. oh my god the world's ending and, and, <laughs> and sustained success too like jose's been doing it for a long time like the devers is just now getting to his peak you know what i mean like ramirez has been top five in mvp voting for the past five years you know what i mean so the year in year out factor for me is also what like gives me a little bit of an edge over him so even in yeah. like those those few statistics that he does have a little bit of an edge over Jose this year, uh, I I still don't I don't think that's indicative of him being better in that category. If that makes sense, yeah. Uh, um, he, no, he's, having, he's playing as good as he can play right now. You know what I mean? Whereas Jose yeah. is he he does this year in and year out. So yeah. if Devers continues to play like he does, you know, two three years down the road, if he has the same numbers that he has right now then it's a different conversation. But as of right now, I, I think like Jose has, he's really, you know, planted his flag as the, the best overall third baseman in the American league. I bet it's you all of baseball. Bet. It's all of baseball, but I think a lot of this, what this comes down to is uh, all-star voting. And this is just uh, all-star voting is a complete sham anyways. Um, but what, you got to look at the fan bases of, of the teams, which one's larger It's Boston. Then you yeah, look at yeah. the the fit the the team um, uh, pairings that a lot of these teams do to help boost each other's um, all star votes. Yeah, uh, Cleveland has the Rockies. Hmm. The Red Sox have the Mets. Okay, yeah. So like, those are two gigantic baseball fan bases compared to the Rockies and the Guardians. Okay, and they're just bumping each other full of votes. Yeah, you know, they, they refer to it as the Mets Sox, okay? The Mets Sox is is quite the quite the uh, force when it comes to all-star voting, where mm-hmm. Cleveland Rocks is not so much. That's funny, Cleveland <laughs> Rocks. <laughs> That's good. By the way, Cleveland is getting destroyed by the Tigers. It is 7-2 to two right now. I'm so glad I'm not watching this game right now. Yeah, we're not playing our best baseball right now, but, you know, no. we'll have that. We, it's a long season. That's why they play 162 of them. Right. I bet you, like, with this whole Jose Ramirez, Rocky Devers discussion, if Ramirez was in a bigger market, he would be the front runner to, for the MVP right now. Yeah, maybe. I. The other thing we're forgetting, too, is, like, look at the help that Devers has down the lineup. 
You know what I mean? Like if, if Jose had a, a guy like a Trevor Story or, you know, batting behind him every night, Jose is going to put up even better numbers. So he, you know, he's doing it without the, the lineup help. Like there, there's so much to be said about the guy who bats before you and the guy who bats after you and how that affects what pitches you're going to see when you're up to bat um, and, you know, your overall approach. And I, I think that if, if he was surrounded with some like really great hitters like Devers is, I think that he would be doing even better than he's doing right now. So Because you know, look at the, the hitters in the Boston lineup outside of, of Devers. It's, it's, it's Bogarts, it's Story, it's Martinez, uh, Verdugo. Like those are actual like good hitters that you have to worry about. You know, right. the the best hitters in the Guardians lineup. I love Josh Naylor, but he's not any of those guys. No. Uh, Fran Mio Reyes has been a complete disaster, even though he's been on an upswing lately. He's been atrocious all year long. Yep. Uh, Andres Jimenez, he's on uh, his career is going upward, but he's not there yet. Right. And, and he's never going to be a big, big power guy either. You know, he's not going to yeah. hit a ton of home runs. So. Yeah, it, like, yeah, there's nobody else. You're, you're right. The other yeah. guys around him, like Owen Miller, he he's good when he's hot, but, you yeah. know, he, he's on and off. Uh, even a guy like Stephen Kwan, he's a rookie. You know, you never know what you're going to get from the rookie. Um, so, like, yeah, he's, he's not surrounded by a, a lot of good bats, and that makes what Jose does in Cleveland even more impressive to me. So yeah. there's a lot of stuff that's not on the stat sheet that, that Devers has working in his favor. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So He's good, though. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying right. that. He's, yeah, he's, right, right. You know, saying is that. an incredible player. Yeah. Jose should be better. We're just giving Jose his flowers because he, like, a lot of people in Cleveland really don't appreciate how, how good of a baseball player that he is. And that's no fault of their own. You know, like, if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. But like that, like, you know, James and I, like, we are not homers. Like we will be the first to be critical of our favorite teams. So like, oh, yeah. when it's a guy like Jose for like us to go to bat and say like, no, he's the best. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's because we firmly believe that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's that yeah. good. He's that good. He's a very, very special generational type talent. Yeah. All right. So looking at some other topics. The Baltimore Orioles were the first team in history to allow a game tying home game tying or go ahead home run in the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings, and yet they still won. I don't know, how, I don't know the fuck they pulled this off. The Orioles suck, and like they're the weirdest team in baseball right now. The, they're so weird. They're bad, yeah. but they're weird. Like they, they just like stuff like this happens to them, and they they win these games that they shouldn't win, and. I just if you gamble on baseball, you know, like you don't bet games that the Orioles are involved in right now because it's just a crapshoot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean they have nice pieces in Baltimore. Like I like Cedric Mullins, Santander looks promising, but obviously they're not a contender, not even like a good team. But they have good pieces moving forward. I will give them that. Yeah, the, the, Adley the, Rutschman's a beast. They, they exactly. might have good pieces moving forward. Who knows how long Adley Rutschman is going to take to actually get to where he needs to go. Right. He hasn't necessarily uh, gotten off on the right foot. Uh, so far, he's looked a hell of a lot more like Matt Wieters than Buster Posey, and that's a problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who knows how long Cedric <laughs> Mullins is going to be there. Uh, Santander, he's falling off a cliff. Okay. Yeah. Like, Trey Mancini, who knows – it, it, if he's going to be there past the deadline or this year. Yeah. Right. And can you name a single Orioles pitcher? Ooh. I can't. <laughs> uh, no. Not off top. Calvin uh, Ripken. Calvin hey, Ripken. wasn't a pitcher and he no longer plays baseball. That's the only guy I know from the Orioles. Good. That's good, though. He That's did good. play for the Orioles. I will give you that. He did play for the Orioles, yeah. 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 Like, like, the Orioles aren't good. But, like. The Oreos? The Oreos. The, Oreos. the O's. They're not the O's. good. So we, but, just, so we just changed their name from the Baltimore Orioles to the Baltimore Oreos. Got it. I'm here for it. I, I yep. mean, 
if they score uh, if they score ten runs in a game, does everyone get like a like an, a free sleeve of like three Oreo cookies? Because I like it. They gotta be either that or like maybe like a few ice cream bars, like something. Wait, something. not just that, James. Not only do they get a free sleeve of Oreos, they get a huge glass of milk to go along with it. <laughs> Baltimore too. They did that thing with their stadium too. They they pushed the fences back too. Oh, no. like, everything they do is just so weird. I, I don't know why that that organization is just like it, they're an anomaly right now. Yeah, yeah, it's not and good. Though. Not a good time to be a Baltimore Orioles fan. No, they have one of the weirder logos. It's just a smiling bird head. Okay, I love their logo. I love their. I think that it's good too. Because I remember when their logo was just O's and it was terrible. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I like this little bird guy. I think he's give me, cute. Give me the cartoon logos. The cartoon logos are fun. Yes. It's, it's yeah. a nice break yes. from just the letters. Yes. yes. I oh, agree. I, oh, I agree. It's a huge oh, upgrade over the stupid letters. Way too many teams are just like, man, we're going to be lazy and just give you a letter. <laughs> I just find the Orioles logo kind of strange. But I, compared to the a majority of the rest of the league, I love it. Like, yeah, but the, the, even the the good players on their team, like you said, Santander is he's on the decline. Like it, they they don't have much to be excited about right now. And even Adley yeah. Rutschman, their most promising player, off to a very terrible start. He has put together a, a couple, you know, good weeks of baseball here and there, but overall, yeah. he hasn't. You know, he's not ready yet. So it, it's still going to remain to be seen if he's going to be productive for them in the future or not. But yeah, yeah. Um, looking around the rest of the league, Mad Max made his return t- for the Max last night, and just he's Max Scherzer. What else would you expect from him? Seriously, he, he, yeah, eleven Ks, season high eleven Ks for him. The, uh, head and shoulders, the best number two starter in all of baseball. Yeah, I mean by miles. He he looked like he didn't miss a beat at all. Um, and then James, I like the the numbers that you have here too. That uh, the Mets did just fine without him in their lineup, uh, going twenty five and fourteen before he went down, and twenty five and sixteen while he was out. Um, so they, you know, played just as good as they did with with him without him. Um, but like James said, he's the best number two starter in the league. Getting him back makes this team even better. Mm-hmm. Um, the Mets are good. It's uh, it's weird to say the Mets are. The Mets are good. They're the real deal. The, the Mets are good. Jacob DeGrom's making his way back soon. Uh, you know, uh, 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 contrary to, to the takes of Frank the Tank, the, the Mets aren't crumbling. They're not collapsing. No, no. no. I think that they are in a very good position um, and, and expect them to be competing to win the National League for sure. They're going to be a force. They're yeah. going to be a force. Yeah. And, oh, uh, side note, uh, Max Scherzer's career ERA at a Grand American, Grand American Ballpark, 0.27. Oh boy. That's impressive. It's insane. It's insane. Wow. Especially yeah. in that ballpark, which is yeah. so hitter friendly. Like for That's... to not even have an ERA over one. Like, come on. How many appearances do we have that number? Uh, I'll, I will get you that for one second. Hold on. Yeah, okay. I'm just curious because uh, I know it's got to be quite a few. He's played them several times. Oh, he yeah. spent some time in the National League with the Nats, so I right. can imagine he's made some trips there. Um, right. And he spent time in the National League with with the Dodgers also. Um. So obviously he's going to go into the Hall of Fame, no question about it. Hall of Fame. <laughs> yes. Anyway. Yeah. If you had to guess, what team do you think he'll go in with? Washington? Uh, I would say he doesn't go in with a team logo. Mm, that's interesting. No cap logo is what no was what my guess is because okay. he was really good in Detroit. He is really good in Washington. He, he's had he's had just a really good long career. Yeah. That I I think he would go in no cap logo. It because I don't think he was in Washington long enough to go in with the curly W. Yeah. Right. And I, the outside of him winning a World Series this season and, you know, maybe multiple 
uh, I agree that I, I don't think that like you can really define his career by one team. You know, he's kind of been around for a while and went from team to team and he's had great success no matter where he's went. So yeah, I, I don't think of like, as of now, if his career ended today, I don't think of him as just a Met or just a Nat or any of those teams. Really, he's just a guy that's been good for a really long time. Yeah, I would agree with you. Um, if I were forced to say, like, what team I think he would go in with, probably Detroit because he's up to this point. That's where he spent the majority of his career. But I would agree with you and say no cap. No yeah. cap. Five games, 33 innings, four wins, just allowed uh, – let's see. Hold on. I just lost it. Um, That's insane. 15 hits, one run allowed. What? He's only allowed one run. 53 strikeouts. Good Lord. What the fuck? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah but I, I think that this, like, Scherzer going out early in the year and the Mets maintaining, you know, success without him was, like, it. this reminds me of, like, a little bit of with the Braves when, you know, they had Acuna go down and then they, they showed that they could, you know, put something together without him. Like, I think that this is going to do good for the Mets in the long run. You know what I mean? Like, they they're, they've shown that they are – they're more than just one or two pitchers. They're more than Jacob DeGrom. They're more than Max Scherzer. Like one of those two guys can go down and they can still be a good team. And I think that's more than Mets fans have been able to say for a while. So they're in a really good spot. Yeah. Yeah. They're not going Mets on us. Right. Not yet. At least a lot of games Thanks. left, but we'll, yeah. <laughs> a lot of games left, but it doesn't look like it. You know, the, none of the, None of the typical Mets shit that, that happens is, you know, none of the writing is on the wall for anything like that. I season. mean, we, we don't got Brett Saberhagen shooting a, a super soaker full of bleach at reporters. We, <laughs> we, we don't have a, a, a pitcher missing his game because he's at a, uh, he's at a house full of drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have guys getting in car accidents. Uh, you know, it, it's just none of the weird shit is happening. Yeah. yeah none of that weird shit is happening. They're just, game forward online and putting their heads down and winning games quite handily too. Yeah. It, New York baseball is, is as good as it's ever been, man. Both of those teams are really good right now. Um, obviously I, I want the guardians to win every world series ever, but I would be pretty excited to watch a, another subway series uh, mm -hmm. with the Yankees and the Mets. Cause that would just be so much fun. Oh, I would totally be down for that. That would be so much fun. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Judge against Pete Alonso. That would be so fun. much star power in that series in general. Like it, oh, it would yeah. be a matchup. Think about that home run derby. If we were to get that final for a second, Judge against Alonso, that would be fun, if, especially in LA. Talking oh, about I mean, home run derby now. Uh, huh? Alonzo's gonna win because he's he's the best home run hitter in all of baseball. So Alonzo. No, I I'm not asking who would win. Do you think that would be a fun matchup if we were to get Judge against Alonzo? Oh, that, yeah, yeah. If they go off into a little battle in the home run derby this year, a little preview of a uh, of fall baseball, maybe. Yeah, that'd be cool. Exactly. That could be fun. Yeah. I just hate when all star games are in places like LA. It's like you, you guys got everything. Yeah, come on. Yeah, I love it when I was in Cleveland this year. Yeah, give all star games to the Midwestern teams and the teams that suck, you know, like don't don't give it to LA. The NBA All Star game next year is gonna be in Salt Lake City. There you go. Interesting. That's yeah, I like that better than LA. Could they do one in they should do one in Toronto too? They just did they recently Oh yeah, they did, did a while back. back. Yeah, yeah Toronto's really difficult too because of the traveling across the border issues and whatnot. Or, or how about one in Samoa? Samoa, American Samoa? Yes, we could. We Might as Samoa. well. Might as well build a court in American Samoa. That's a long well, flight, Sherry. You know that, right? American Samoa is very far from here. Well, shit. Cody Clemens just hit a home <laughs> run, and it, it is now eight to two, Detroit. Oh well. Eh. Stick a fork no. in this series, put it behind us. Fuck the Tigers. That's yeah. Right. But anyway, 
we have reached the natural end of things here. We made it to four o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, does anybody have any final thoughts before we uh, separate ways for the week? The Cavs, it was good for the Browns. Yeah, it was a good Cleveland week. Um, bye bye Baker Mayfield. Don't yeah, don't slip over the uh, carpet on the way out. Yeah, adios Baker. I'm so glad he's gone and we don't have to talk about him anymore. But mm -hmm. that's all I got. Go Guardians. We'll get things back together. I still yep. will miss this Hollywood Higgins celebration. You're the only one. Eric. You're the only one. It was stream. awesome when it happened. End the stream. <laughs> Ending stream now.